right. Thank you, Miss Jennifer. The Gospel of John, open up to the Gospel of John, chapter 14. John, chapter 14. I've entitled my message today after a, a book that Brother Hiles had wrote, uh, which I have I've only read one chapter of it. I don't own it. I just found it online, and uh, I read one chapter, um, and I'd already had my sermon um, written out, completed, and finished. Um, but uh, the, the title of this book is called Let's Meet the Holy Spirit, or Meet the Holy Spirit. And um, uh, I entitled that for my message this morning. I told uh, the sewing crowd yesterday that's what I was going to name it for today. Um, Brother, Brother Dan, aren't you proud of me? I already had my title picked out. You don't have to come chase it down. I don't have to say, come back and see me in five minutes. It's let's meet the Holy Spirit. There you go. Thank you. Let's meet the Holy Spirit. Uh, the only way uh, Three Rivers Baptist Church is ever going to <laughs> even come close to doing what it once did is if we have the Holy Spirit. See, I think... We, we many times we mistake that we got saved and we own a King James Bible and we go to a Baptist church and that kind of just puts it on autopilot. That is absolutely not the case in any way, shape, or form. Uh, we often neglect the person, the actual person of the Holy Spirit. Um, God is in heaven. Yes, his power, but the the... the the world is on autopilot. When God, in Genesis, when God said, let there be, and there was, and it was good, it did, and it was commanded until revelation comes to a close. It's the, the sun is doing what it was commanded to do, so is the moon, the stars, the ocean, the birds, the creeping thing, um, which are children, the creeping things, the, um, the, the fowl in the air, everything. It's doing its, its course. It's in its course and in its nature. It's doing what it's supposed to be doing. So God is not uh, getting up every morning and stirring the pot and making it all go. He's not winding the world up and letting it go. It is doing what it's doing. God is in heaven. Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord, he's no longer on earth in body. He's not here. He's in heaven. The Bible says that he's sitting at the right hand of God. In Ephesians, it said that he's set in heavenly places on the right hand of God. Jesus Christ came here. He did his work. For 33, for, for 33 years, he lived here. Three years, he did his ministry. And now he is sitting at the right hand of God. But he didn't leave us alone. He didn't forsake us. He didn't forget about us. And he didn't just leave us a written word. He left us, he left us his spirit. His spirit. Now, the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse number 15. <clears throat> verse number 15, the Bible says, If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father. This is Jesus speaking to the disciples. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. Now look at me for a moment. That word comforter um, in its translation means as an advocate. An advocate. But it also means a comforter. A consoler. Someone that will help you in a time of need. I will give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Verse 26. Verse 26. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Heavenly Father, I'd ask that you'd bless our time this morning. Help it to be profitable to the hearer. And Lord, I, I ask that you'd help me as I speak this morning, not just to preach a good sermon, but to preach a sermon of message of substance, something that people can sink their teeth into, Something that they can grab on to and say, man, I, I need to do that, or I need to do better at that, or man, that was convicting, or that was encouraging, or to at least set our feet on straight paths and um, make our lives count for something. We're here for only a little bit of time. Uh, our life is as a vapor. It goes up and it vanishes, and we're here and we're gone. I help our, the little bit of time we spend here to echo throughout eternity for the glory 
of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, you'll find many times in the Bible, uh, Holy Spirit or capital S Spirit or God's Spirit or in the New Testament 89 times, you'll find Holy Ghost. They're the same person. They're the same one. There's no difference between them. They're the same one. That word ghost we get from ancient um, Anglo-Saxon, geist, G-H-A-S-T, meaning breath, meaning ghost, meaning spirit. Um, and that's where our that's what we get. You're the, the holy breath, the holy ghost, the holy spirit. They're the same thing. They're the same thing. Now, um, I may have a couple of um, abstract sayings, but um, uh, they're ones I believe the Lord gave me. But uh, I, I want us to get the right mindset this morning of the role that the Holy Ghost plays in our life. Who, who is the Holy Spirit? What, what, what's he do? What's his function? What's he, what's he all about? Scripture tells us. In uh, Sunday school, we talked about knowledge. The Bible is to give us knowledge. Knowledge about what? Knowledge about God. Knowledge about Jesus. Knowledge about the Holy Spirit. What's he all about? Um, I want to say this uh, as a statement, almost detached, but I'll try to tie it in. Um, we are often not helped. We are often not helped in our grief because we have grieved the only one who can help us in our grief. We spend so much time in grief and in travail and in tribulation and in problems, and I don't mean testing but I mean things that we brought upon ourselves. And we look for help. Oh, help, oh, help, oh, help, oh, where can I find help? And, and it's not until we get in trouble that we turn to the Holy Spirit and say, oh, Holy Spirit, help me. And, and he will. It's not that he's abandoned you. Because the same promise that Jesus gave, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. If he was not implying the Holy Spirit, then he would have never have died and went and went up to, and ascended up into heaven, he'd still be with us today. He was implying his spirit would never leave us nor forsake us. So his spirit is with us. But the thing is, is we get into trouble and then we turn and go, oh, where are you? He's there, but he's, he's, he's that friend who's stopped coming to the parties because we've offended him so many times. He's that guy who's just standing off into the corner now going, I'm just going to mind my, you go ahead and stick your finger in the light socket and you go ahead and, 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 and um, hold your hand in that flame and I'm not telling you what to do anymore because you're not going to listen to me anyway. But when it's, it's um, uh, I said in Sunday school, just a precursor to this morning's message, we are often not helped in our grief immediately or in our time, not helped in our grief because we have grieved the one the only one who can help us in our grief. That's why when we don't immediately find um, relief in the Holy Spirit, we run to a psychiatrist, we run to a doctor, we run to a pill, we run to a joint, we run to alcohol, we run to these things that will give us an immediate relief because we're looking for immediate relief. But here's, here's the thing. Anybody know 1 John 1, 9? Does anybody know that? Can somebody quote it for me, Miss Sarah? Anybody believe that? He, right? He is faithful and he is just to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. And he does. But why don't I feel cleansed after I've confessed my sin? Because it is not confession only that gets us Holy Spirit presence and power in our life. I can't tell you how many times I've confessed and I've walked away going, man, I, I've confessed it. Here's the great thing. I confessed it. He is faithful and just to forgive me. He is faithful and just to forgive me. You see, me, my feeling on the matter when I walk away from my confession does not depend on his faithfulness. He is faithful. He is just. He will cleanse me from all my unrighteousness. Wow, what a relief that is. But what's going to make me feel better? Because um, our basketball coach in high school said, if you look good, you feel good. If you feel good, you play good. Right, we all came out dripping in our royal blue and white Three Rivers Baptist Academy chargers and our Converse shoes and socks and our warm-ups. And man, we had confidence in the way that we looked. And when we felt good, we played good. Okay, so why is it that when I confess my sins, I don't walk away feeling good? Why am I not feeling good? Because there are other things, there are other ingredients that go into Holy Spirit presence in your life. Well, Brother Jackson, what are they? It's called pure living. It's called obedience. And it's called prayer. 
They say uh, a poll was taken of, of, of not just Baptist pastors, but pastors across the board. 80% of pastors play, pray less than 15 minutes a day. 70% of pastors only rely on Bible study for their messages throughout the week and not prayer. You will not find in Scripture where, seven, where, where Bible study, Bible study, because if you'll go Old Testament and say, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. If you'll go Joshua 1.8, if you'll go Psalm chapter 119, and, and, really, and 2 Timothy 2.15, and you'll soak up the Bible and soak up the Bible and soak up the Bible and soak up the Bible. America could go fascist, could go communist, could go Nazi and take away and do book burnings and take away our Bibles. But men, they can't take away your heart. And if you've laid up the word of God and its precepts into your heart, then man, then you just pray. They can't take away prayer. They'll have to kill you to make you stop praying. I watched, um, uh, there's a, a, a magazine they I got for a while. It's called Voice of the Martyrs. Anybody ever heard of that, Voice of the Martyrs? I would get that at my house, and they, they sent me a video of Richard Vermbrand. He's um, uh, uh, taken into communist prison and beat and beat and beat, separated from his wife, and, and they beat him and beat, just for being a Christian. And uh, every night, they'd open up that little latch on the cell door and look inside, and there he was on his knees praying, and they'd beat him. And they'd come back the next night, and they'd beat him, and they'd beat him. And the guy came in, the bailiff, the, the, the um, jailkeeper came in one night, just mad, and his eyes bulging, and he's, what are you doing? What's wrong with you? Why are you praying? Your God's not hearing you. What are you praying for? You're not getting out of here. And Richard Wormbrand opened his eyes, and he said, I was praying for you. And it was like the man was shot in the chest. You see, they can take away, they can lock churches, they can take your Bibles, they can shut down Christian educations and Christian universities. They can do that. I mean, we all think we, we live in this bubble. We live in the world that's ran by the devil, amen? And the only thing that's keeping the devil from, from, from uh, America's coming completely unhinged is the grace of God and Bible preachers and Bible teachers and parents who pray and colleges and universities who preach and teach the Bible, the King James Bible, not just some Bible, but the Bible. The Bible, an every word Bible. Not an every thought, not an every feeling, not an every, no, but an every word Bible. And they can take away all those things, but they can't take away prayer. How does the, how does a church, how does a father, how does a mother, how does a kid get Holy Spirit presence in his life? Prayer, clean living, and confession. Prayer, clean living, and confession. Folks, I've got no, I have no problem. For a long time, I had no problem with confession. That's like standing before a judge with blood on your hands and him saying, you're convicted of murder. You're like, Yep, sure am. Still got the murder weapon in my hand. You're guilty. No sense in hiding from it. No sense in hiding. Now, we try to play the system because it's a man-to-man -man thing, but this is before God. I got no problem. I'm not trying to hide any sin before God. I'll go to God and go, dear God in heaven, I am guilty. He says, I know you are. And I say, Lord, I know that the word says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, you won't hear me. I'm not regarding it. I'm not. It's yours, Lord. It's in front of you. I hate it. It's like a... It's like a Something sticky, I can't get off of me. It's like, I can't get it off. I can't shake it, can't get it off, can't wash it off. God, I'm sorry. He says, I know you are. But you show me that you're sorry, not by saying that you're guilty. You show me that you're sorry by forsaking. You see, we have confession. Oh, I can confess. Anybody can confess. And you're a dummy if you don't confess before God. You're just about as dumb. You're as dumb. You say, Brother Jack, don't call us dumb. You're just plain dumb if you don't confess your sin before the Lord. Confess it. Here's the hard part, Christian. Forsake it. You're like, I've tried. I mean, I've tried walking away from that thing. I've, I've closed it. You know, I've closed it in the door, and I turn around, and there it is again. Man, I've tried forsaking. It, don't, don't forsake it tomorrow. Forsake it today. Folks, fight the fight tomorrow, tomorrow. Fight that battle today. I told the sowing crowd yesterday, I've never lost. I've never lost. I've not lost against the world, the flesh, and the devil yet. You say, what? Folks, the world may knock me down, but I'm getting back up. And if you keep getting back up, you're not beat. It's one thing to get beat up. It's another one to get beat down. And I've been beat up, and you've been beat up. But don't get beat down. Don't get beat down. But if you do get beat down, I know a good Samaritan. 
There's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother, and his name's Jesus. And he has not left us, and he has not forsaken us. He's here right now today. You say, where? The Holy Spirit of God. But wh where is he, though? I don't feel him. Brother Jackson, I believe in you. I believe in the Trinity. I believe God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. I believe in God the Father. He's in heaven. He's the creator. I believe in God the Son. He died on the cross and paid for my sin and shed his blood. I believe that he's ascended on the right hand of God. But where's his spirit? You've quenched him. You've you put duct tape on his mouth. You've tied his hands. You've sat him over there in the kitty ta at the kitty table of your heart and said, I sit on the throne. I don't want that to be said about me. I don't want it to be about you. And I definitely, God bless, don't want it to be said about Three Rivers Baptist Church. Three Rivers Baptist Church, we ain't dead. We're, I mean, and I don't mean we, but I mean us. Uh, we're not dead. We're not, our, our, we, have, we serve a living Savior. He's in the world today. You say, how do you know he's living? He lives within my heart. But where is he, though? Is he, does he have the, the guest bedroom? Does he have the cellar? Is he out in the backyard in a tent? Or is he sitting in the throne of your heart today? Is he sitting at the throne of our church? Let's just close up all the doors, shut off all the lights, save our money, sell the building, split it fairly, and go about our merry old way if we're just going to play church. I'm not, I don't want to play church. I hang that mess. I don't want to play it. I don't want to do it. I don't want to have any part of it if, if God's not going to be in this thing. God's not going to be in it. You say, well, how does God get in it? I, we got to bring him. We have to let him have his, let him have his way with thee. His power can make you what you are. Folks, these hymns have more power and more doctrine and more uh, uh, spiritual philosophy in them than most of us could even muster up to find in the Bible if we were given an open book test. Just open up a hymn book. Open up a hymn book. Open up a Bible. You see, I want us to understand this morning that the Holy Spirit is not just some thing. He is the third person of the deity of, of God. He is God. You say, whoa, that sounds like blasphemy. You mean like all the religious people said about Jesus back in the day? He is God. If you know me, if you know, if you know me, you know my father, Jesus said. If you've seen me, you've seen my father. And folks, we, there have been times where we felt the Holy Spirit of God in this place. You'd walk in on a Sunday morning, it was electric. You'd say, well, what is that? Is that the band? Is that the choir? Was that Brother Rennell's that's still the blood? No, the, the, the choir was filled with the Spirit, and, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the, the still the blood was filled with the Spirit. And the, bless God, the, the, the diaper changing in the nursery had the Spirit of God in it. The Spirit of God can be in this place. Somebody said to Pastor Jackson some years ago, you're not careful, you're going to organize the Holy Spirit out. He said, nope, we're organizing the Holy Spirit in. In structure, we're organizing him in. Organ in, organizing him in. Now, folks, why do we suffer grief? Why do we go through all these things more and abound in our grief and sorrow and tears? Because we've grieved the one who can help us. It's like telling the fireman, no, don't rescue me, I'll ask somebody else. Don't, don't, don't give me CPR, I'll just wait on somebody else. You see, it's the Holy Spirit of God. There is an antidote to our problems. There is a solution to our problems, and it is the Spirit of the living God, whom we call the Holy Ghost. Folks, most churches are, are dead on arrival. Don't ever mistake a church's activity for Holy Spirit power. Don't ever mistake, a whole, uh, somebody posted some things on Facebook the other day and said, oh, the, our church, blah, 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 and it looked like, a nightclub, laser lights, and it was dark and had the, the lights everywhere, you know, and there was no chairs, and it looked like a club. Everybody's standing around and holding their, their, you know, their drinks and, you know, whatever. Okay, look, I'm all for social activities, but hang, listen, I would rather go hang out with me. I would rather enjoy my company than go to a stupid social activity in the name of church. Hang that garbage. I like me better than I like y'all anyway, and so do you. Y'all like you better than y'all like everybody anyway. And I feel sorry for people who have a need to be around people. I need friends. Yeah, you, you need help. Um, uh, if, you can't, if you can't enjoy your mind and be at peace with your mind, I feel sorry for you. And, I, and I'm all for that. I'm all for the, uh, bowling and breakfast and banquets and clubs. I'm all for that, but I'm only for it if we got the Holy Spirit backing us up, and I'm not saying the Holy Spirit's got to be like, you know, he's, he's, we got to set a dinner plate out for him at the banquet. Um, um, but I am saying it's pointless. It's pointless. Every activity, every Mother's Day, every Father's Day, every uh, church anniversary, it's pointless if the Holy Spirit of God's not with us and the gospel isn't our main message. 
Churches have neglected him. Uh, the average church, Brother Tozer said, the average church should be able to operate on a Bible and a hymn book. The average church, every church, should be able to, a- a- to operate on a Bible and a hymn book. We, sh- uh, we shouldn't even, miss the, miss, I don't want to say we don't need the piano. Yes, we do. Uh, uh, but um, uh, the instruments and whatnot, but now it's a production. We have to have the band, and we have to have this, and we have to have the PowerPoint and the screens. and the, and the. I'm all for convenience and technology. I'm all for those things, all for it. But if the PowerPoint went out on the screen, the preacher and the people should be able to go, eh, let's move on with our Bibles and what the preacher has to say. No big deal. If the lights, if we had the power outage, no big deal. Let's keep on preaching. We've done that. I think we've shown some of that fortitude throughout the years when we didn't have heat and everybody walked out of here with kerosene headaches, amen, going, goodness gracious. We need Holy Spirit healing after that. Um, and we tried to put in uh, that, that chemical that um, uh, pulls the, 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 the smell out of the air and whatnot to, to help everybody not get sick. But man, we've tried. We've, we've, we've plowed through, amen. But most churches, if they couldn't operate on a Bible, if we went to a lot of places today and said, shut down everything, here's a Bible, here's a hymn book for, a hymn book for all your people, they'd close their doors. They wouldn't know what to do with it. Not only would most churches close, but a lot of people wouldn't know how to serve. Well, I don't know how to serve the Lord if I don't have a guitar in my hands. I don't know how to serve the Lord if I don't, if I don't, um, if I don't have um, the, the, conductor, the conductor's wand in my hand. I wouldn't know how to serve the Lord if I didn't have my PowerPoint presentations. I wouldn't know how to serve the Lord if I didn't have my computer to zoom in and follow the pastor. I wouldn't know how to serve the Lord. Come on now. It's time, it's time uh, uh, that we as a nation, as churches, get back to the basics of serving the Lord. The Lord didn't tell me to run a computer screen. He didn't tell me to have a PowerPoint presentation. Get, get, let me say this again. Not against those things. Not against them. But modern churches have started to depend on the conveniency. Uh, one guy said um, what happens is the church kind of winds up with all of its to-dos, and then the, 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 the pastor just manages it, and we never ask the Holy Spirit to join us. We never ask for Holy Spirit power. We never uh, have the Holy Spirit move through our church. I don't want that. Now, the Holy Spirit must be present. But in most cases, we feel as though we need to put on a production to keep people happy when, when it's the Holy Spirit that we have to keep happy. You see, it's the Holy Spirit that we must keep happy. If the Holy Spirit was gone from us, would we know it? Would we know it? If the Holy Spirit was gone from us, I was thinking the other day, and I, was, I can't remember what I was doing, where I was. And I just thought, where's the Holy, does the, does the Holy Spirit, what do you think about this? Holy Spirit, convict me. Say something. Do something. You ever get ready to do something dumb, and you're hoping, I'm going to jump off this ledge, and you're like, I hope my friend stops me. And your friend just looks at you like, hold on, let me get my phone out. Let me watch you do something. No, what you want is a friend to stop you from being dumb and making bad decisions. What you want is a consoler and a counselor who's going to guide you down the right way. But that's what the Bible says. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Jeremiah 9, 23. Oh, Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It's not in man that walketh to direct his steps. The, good, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. God You've got to show me. Open thou my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And the word, amen, was made flesh and dwelt among us. And that word, who was Jesus, was the light of the world. But men love to dwell in darkness. You see, when we let Jesus in, he shines the light on all our problems and all our insufficiencies and all our dispositions and all our sins. And we go, oh, no, no, no. I'll just have a little talk with Jesus. We'll just, we'll just go to church for that, that one service. I'll go this one month, but this month I'm not going. And we pick and choose and pick and choose. What we want to do is be a pick and choose Christian and have a full-time Holy Spirit, and that's not the way it works. It's not the way it works. I've always loved it, and I keep saying it. I don't even know if it applies here. But one pastor said, I don't even know who quoted it, you cannot shack up with the devil and expect God to pay the bills. And our church cannot be uh, 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 powerless and expect to have power. 
We cannot uh, uh, say souls are our main goal and then go out with no Holy Spirit power and try to tell somebody about Jesus. I told the Lord yesterday, I'm not talking to anybody if I don't have the power of the Holy Spirit of God on me because I can go out and rehearse some things, but it is the Spirit that does the work. Not the convincing words of Jake Jackson, not his personality. I have people tell me all the time, you got a, there's something about you, you got a light, you got an energy, you're a people person. I said, no, I'm not. I'm an out in the woods by myself kind of person. I'm a, I'm a leave me alone kind of person. And, and I'm friendly. I hear Drew, brother, brother Drew saying amen. And right, the Holy Spirit's here. Drew just said amen in church. No, I, uh, 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 I just, um, um, <laughs> uh, I'm the same way. It's just like, look, you, you, I'm nice. I'm kind. I'll help you change your tire. But no, you're not coming over for coffee, and I don't want to go over to your house for coffee. I like you from there, and you like me from here. Okay, but the Holy Spirit of God makes us uncomfortable. And one of the things about us is we don't think we can. We don't think we have winning personalities. We don't think we're convincing. We don't think we're intellectual enough or educated enough or know enough of the Bible. Folks, you don't have to. Gideon wasn't a warrior. Saul was a murderer and an imprisoner of Christians who God did something with him. Noah was a nobody who built a, a, an impossible thing for water coming out of the sky. That was impossible. Nobody knew anything about it. Moses was a guy who tripped over his own tongue, babbling. Just talk. God, I can't talk. Fine, I'll send your brother with you. I'll send your brother with you. Folks, where God is, and that's the majority. And Moses said, God, I don't want to go if you're not going to go. God, I'm not going if you don't go for, before me. God, folks, God's already there. He's out in your future. He's taking care of your past. He's in your today. He's taking care of it. The Holy Spirit of God is the third person of the deity who's with us right now today. If he's gone, do you know it? When's the last time you felt convicted? When's the last time I told the Lord this morning, I said, Lord, I just want to weep. I want to weep for my family. I have family members who I just want to wake up. I want to weep for my nation. I want to weep for me. I want to weep. God, I just want to bawl. I, want to, I just want to let it all out. Now, I didn't. I got up rejoicing because God heard it and he took care of everything that was going on. But if the Holy Spirit wasn't there to tell you and to talk with you and commune you and console with you and to comfort you and to convict you, would you know it? Would you know it? I said last week, I said that um, foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction will drive it far from him. When did we think that we became adults with God? We're not adults in God's eyes. We're his children. When did we grow up and think that foolishness only abounded in the heart of children? Last I checked, I did some pretty stupid stuff. You be quiet. No, I, <laughs> you were amening yourself. I get it. Um, um, uh, uh, but, but I, I, I still foolish, still have foolishness bound up in me because I'm a human. But God's rod of correction will drive it far from me. But God would much rather sit down and have a talking to with me through his spirit than he would whoop me with the rod. God always wants to iron me out before he has to chastise me, always. Now, who is the Holy Spirit? Goodness gracious. Oh, the Lord has slowed down. Take the batteries out of that clock back there. Um, who, is, who is the Holy Spirit? Who is the Holy Spirit? All right, let me tell you very quickly. I need to go quick and stick to my notes here. Spirit is another mode of being. Spirit is another mode of being. Now, here you have matter. Matter. This is matter. It's taking up space. It has weight. It has size. Your head is matter. Some of you have much more matter. Uh, ma you have, some of you have, you, we all have matter. Everything in this room has matter. Square footage taking up space. What is it? It's height, it's weight, it's size, it's space. But spirit is another mode of being, and it doesn't have size and weight and uh, doesn't take up space. Now, one, one power of the Holy Spirit is the ability, now get this, the ability to penetrate or to influence you. You see right here, this is spirit. <sighs> That's a spirit. That is a, that is a, a um, you, your, your senses just heard what would be a sigh. 
a deep sigh. And what that is, is an indication of my spiritual mode at that time. <sighs> Man, doggone it. I got to take another oversized load to North Carolina. It took me three days to get to North Carolina. Three days. Last week, it took me one. I got to Raleigh, North Carolina in 10 hours and 11 minutes in the semi. Yeah, baby. Uh, I was real proud of myself. But um, uh, 750 miles in a day is nothing now, especially if I go out Texas, Oklahoma, I can do 75 mile an hour. Yeah, baby. Uh, but um, uh, that's a good spirit. Yeehaw! That's the spirit. But the Holy Spirit can penetrate you. The Holy Spirit can get into you and, and um, uh, penetrate your personality. That's why this morning, last night and this morning, I got up and and, and uh, uh, I, told, I, I told myself, I said, man, I, with everything that's going on, I said, Lord, I feel like a, an article of clothing in the dryer. My life is just tumbling. Everything that's going on. He said, yeah, but what's happening to that clothes? I said, it's getting dried. He said, the purpose for putting clothes in the dryer is to dry them, isn't it? Now, Lord, don't take my feelings on a matter of my expression and make sense of them. And, and he said, Jake, I'm working. A, he that hath go, begun a good work in you shall perform it until the day of Christ Jesus. God knows what's going on in my life. He knows what's going on in your life. He, you're not lost to God. God's not looking at you going, hmm, what am I going to do about his situation? He's already got it planned out. He already has it planned. This is why it's imperative to stay close to the spirit of God to stay so close to his spirit because his personality, his penetrating personality, um, uh, penetrates my personality. And when I clean up my life and I confess and I forsake and I obey the Bible and I obey the Lord th that day, get it again, that day, and plan on doing it the next day, excuse me, the Holy Spirit then can have his way with us. Then you say, man, what's up with that guy? That's Holy Spirit right there. That's Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit of God can penetrate the spirit of man. When I'm down, he can help me get up. When I'm prideful, he can abase me. When I'm distraught and down and depressed, he can lift me up. He can. It's been his word. Some years ago, I talked to my dad about mental, uh, uh, the Christian and, and mental illness. Dad, I'm, man, I'm a Jackson. I'm a Christian. I'm an American. Why am I this way? Why do I feel this way? What's going on in my life? And you know what it was that brought me back? What it is that centered me? What it is that put my feet on higher ground? The Holy Spirit of God. Not a pill, not a bottle, but one Christian to another Christian saying, what does the Bible say? What does God say about this? What, what, what's going on with this situation? What's happening with me? What's going on? It's, I'm telling you, the world Christian, Christian, the world will poison you and wants to keep you poisoned. And if you don't walk with the Lord, you'll get poisoned. You'll get soured. You'll get out of church. You'll go and do things and say things and be a person you never thought you'd be. One of the powers is to uh, penetrate the personality of man. The Holy Spirit of God can penetrate the spirit of man. Now, the Holy Spirit is not, is not enthusiasm. You see these people dancing and prancing and talking in tongues and rolling down the aisle and waving their bodies and gyrating and doing all kinds of stupid stuff. That is not the Holy Spirit, and don't ever think it is. Don't ever think it is. And all the people, the thousands of people who have seen some of these videos on Facebook, if you're one of these gyrating, uh, 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 funny-looking fools, you're not filled with the Holy Spirit. You may be filled with a spirit, but it is not the Holy Spirit of God because you will not find the Holy Spirit of God ever running around and jumping around and talking in some stupid language that nobody can understand. So uh, you can get on Facebook and criticize me, not that I'm some big wig that anybody pays attention to anyway, but bless God, you're not right with God and you're probably not even saved. You don't have his spirit if you're acting like one of them dummies. Now, the spirit of God is not enthusiasm. Humba, lama, fumba, shamba, Ford, Chevy, Dodge, whatever you say, that's not the spirit of God. Now, uh, uh, enthusiasm, talking in tongues. I had a word of knowledge. If your word of knowledge is not based on scriptural truth, you have a word of stupidity and you should probably just keep your mouth shut. A lot of Christians say, well, I had an experience, an experience. Now, I don't know about your salvation experience, but these, these, um, these, these uh, uh, word of knowledge experiences, these revelation experience, folks, revelation means to be revealed, and God will not reveal anything to you that has not been revealed in this book. 
This is it. The revelation is completed. It's done. What is written is being done and then on its way to being done. Folks, you see the signs and the wonders and the spy balloons and the seven point earthquake in Turkey and Syria. Anybody hear that? Tens of thousands dead. Maybe even some of them converts of Brother Bachman. Tens of thousands dead. Signs and wonders. You say, what is this? This hurricanes and more earthquakes and more tornadoes and more catastrophes and wars and rumors of wars. You know what's being thrown around lately? World War III. World War III. World War III. It's being thrown. This is, these are signs of the times. The earth is grumbling. It's saying, oh, come Lord Jesus. That's what it's saying. It's saying, oh, come Lord Jesus. Now the Holy Spirit is not enthusiastic. I'm happy I'm in church today. Good. Let's see how you are next Sunday and the Sunday after and the Sunday after. Oh, and not only Sunday, but Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday when, you're, when your check is short and your boss mistreated you and your coworkers are jerks and you had a fight with your spouse and the kids are misbehaving. Let's see enthusiasm then. Let's see it then. I can tell you, and I'm, I'll be transparent, but every time I get behind the wheel of that truck and I got to go several hundred miles away, New Orleans is going to be cool, but I don't want to go 950 miles away. I don't want to do that. I'm not enthusiastic about that. Hey, we've got an oversized load for you. That's not, I'm not enthusiastic about that. I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I have joy, but I am not happy. I have joy, but I am not happy. Happy comes from what? Happiness, happenings. Joy is something deeper. And the Holy Spirit can bring these things up. I told the Lord this morning, I said, Lord, I, I don't have a grateful, a, a, an attitude of gratitude right now. I said, so Lord, help me fix that. And I got down on my knees and I started thanking God for all the things that I have and don't have. He said, do you thank God for things that you don't have? Like what? Like cancer. Like blindness. Like being deaf. Like, look at this. I can move all these. I can move. I can, I can I have all my faculties, they say. I'm thankful for that. Thankful for my friends and my family. Thankful for my country. Thankful for the people who died for my freedoms. Thankful for my ancestors who died for that. Why, why was I doing all that? Because it was the right thing to do? No, because I need the spirit, the presence, and the power of the Holy Spirit of God. If he's real and he said he'd never leave us nor forsake us, then I want him. Then I want him. If you want him, claim him. Now, what is he not? He's not enthusiasm. He's not an experience. The Holy Spirit never enters a man, folks, and lets him, lets him live like the world. Now you say, so you're telling me that somebody can get, what about this, this, they didn't really get saved if they didn't change their life? Nope. It's a big difference. I'm sitting at the table with my son, Lucas, and Lucas says, Dad, will you pass me the mashed potatoes? Yes, I will. It's what the Holy Spirit can do for you. You see, the Holy Spirit is not just a do-for-you kind of guy. He's somebody who said that will do something with you also. You say, well, I want to be saved. The Holy Spirit will seal you, will come in unto you, and seal you until the day of redemption. But if you want to be served of the Lord, you want to build a church, you want to build a Sunday school class, you want to build a bus route, you want to sing with joy in your heart and have a, a real impact on the, on, the, on the ears that hear it, you want to have a ministry that makes an impact, then you have to do what is required to be used with him. You see, three years Baptist church, we're saved. Oh, we're saved. And you know what? Clap your hands, stomp your feet, you know, turn around, sit down, sit, whatever. But we're all saved. Amen. Hallelujah. But if we want to be used of God, used of the spirit, if we want the Holy Spirit to be meet with us and to dwell with us and to use us, then we have to do what's required for that. And that is obedience. See, I asked my dad uh, a couple months ago, I said, dad, how do you get Holy Spirit power? He said, well, clean living and obedience. I said, okay. So I called um, Pastor Alan Domley in Oklahoma City. I said, Brother Domley, how do you get Holy Spirit power? And he said, well, I suppose it's by clean living and obedience. <laughs> I said, okay, all right. You know, uh, uh, the three's a crowd, so we'll just make it two. And um, uh, uh, that's, what that's what we're going to aim for. I already know clean living is what you're supposed to do anyway, but, but and, and, and obedience. Obedience to what? Obedience to the Bible. You see, your marriage, your even grandparents, you can have an influence on your grandchildren and on your children. Just because your children are grown doesn't mean anything. You're still mom and you're still dad. Um, uh, uh, and you still have an influence on your kids and you can do it with 
a Holy Spirit powered. You wouldn't count out God, would you? You wouldn't count out Jesus, would you? Well, then why is it that we count out the Holy Spirit to do magical, and, or not magical, supernatural, supernatural works today? We saw Jesus, or not saw, but we hear of Jesus do miracles, accounts and testimonies of Jesus doing the miracles. We believe in God said, let there be, and there was, and we believe in that. But why is it the third person of Almighty God gets discounted? God will never do any work at Three Rivers again. God won't fix my marriage. God won't fix my kids. God won't do this. God won't do that. Well, if you fall in line with the requirements, God will always do his part. He said, draw nigh to me and I will draw nigh to you. You do your part and I'll do mine. There are so many times in the Bible where you can find where he says, if my people, if you will, if thou wilt, then I will. You see, God doesn't operate on the welfare system where just because I'm his child, I'm a baby bird and I open my mouth and he fills it. I got to be in the nest. I got to be there for feeding time. I can't be out flapping my wings out of the nest somewhere and expect him to fly up and meet me somewhere and give me everything that I need. No, I've got to be near him. I've got to be dear to him. I've got to be in his fold. I've got to be his child and I've got to be hungry. God can come with the food all the time, but I got my mouth filled up with other things. If I've got my life filled up with other things, there's no room for the Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit is not enthusiasm. And he'll never leave you the way he finds you if you'll let him have his way. Lots of folks, uh, 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 what they want to do is they want to feast on the world and then have the Holy Spirit for dessert on Sunday. Now, I promise you, if you'll feast on the Holy Spirit, God always puts a cherry on top. God always puts a cherry on top, but we go out and we get filled up with Amazon Prime and we get filled up with Netflix and Hulu and Disney Plus, a bunch of perverts, and we get uh, uh, filled up with um, Fox News and CNN. If you do that, you're dumber than you look. And you get uh, MSNBC and all these talking heads who are just regurgitating the same old sad, bad news anyway. And we get filled up on all the things of the world, maybe not even sinful. But we make it sinful because we feast on these things and we just come to church on Sunday for dessert and we want the blessing to walk out. See, many people think they come to church to get their, fill, their tank filled. No, you should come to church to get your tank topped off. Don't fill up on Sunday. Top off on Sunday because it's a long road Monday through Saturday. The Holy Spirit will not be an addition. He will not be a supplement. He must be Lord or he won't come at all. He is not a supplement. Now, the Holy Spirit is not those things. Now, what is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit's a person. He's a person. He's a person. Say that with me. Say, the Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit is a person. He is a person. Just like a person sitting next to Well, some of them might be aliens. But uh, sitting right next to, you know, UFOs and whatnot all these days. Uh, but um, uh, uh, he is a person. Get this. He's a person, not a personification. You say, not a personification. Yeah, he's not Santa Claus, who is the... the um, the personification of giving somebody a gift. He's not Jack Frost, who's the, in the personification of cold. He's not the Sandman. Some of you classic rock stars out there. Uh, he's not Enter Sandman. He's not the Sandman, who's the personification of sleep. He's not a personification. He's a person. He's a person. Same as you. He has individuality, but he's a part of the Trinity. He has a will, but it's God's will. He has intelligence and feeling and knowledge and sympathy and ability, just as we do. And guess who sent him to be with us? God did. God and Jesus sent him to help us and to guide us and to comfort us. He's to teach us the things of Jesus. He said in, in, in John Chapter uh, 14, verse 26. He's to teach us the things of Jesus, to bring into remembrance those things. You say, who is the Holy Spirit? He's a representative of Jesus. He is there to say, this is who Jesus, this is what I, this is who I am. I am a representative. He is a representative. So who is the Holy Spirit so far? He's a spirit. He's a spirit, not matter. He's a person, not personification. He is the next part of the Trinity of God. He is God the Spirit. He is God the Spirit. God Almighty. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. These three are one. And he has just as much power, just as much authority, just as much being in matter as God the Father. He is God the Holy Spirit. Some folks reject this. 
If they reject the Trinity, they're wrong. Just point blank, they're wrong. Thousands and thousands and thousands have been, uh, uh, have been murdered or killed or maimed or uh, 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 imprisoned just for this doctrine. Our Christian ancestors spilled rivers of blood for the cause of this scripture, the cause of this, this, um, uh, uh, this doctrine, which leads me to the next statement uh, on the subject of the Trinity. Not only did our forefathers believe in it, stand for it, die for it, but scripture teaches it. That's the most important piece. Scripture teaches the Trinity. Now, you will not find the word the Trinity uh, in the Bible. You also will not find the word rapture in the Bible, uh, but you will find both of those teachings. Now, Scripture teaches it. We are a Bible-based scriptural church. Before we were Baptist, we were Bible. Understand that. The reason why we're Baptist is because we're Bible a Bible Baptist church. The Bible is the ultimate authority. The ultimate authority. We are a Bible or a scriptural church. Um, uh, the best kind of churches to attend are scriptural churches. Um, the best kind of families are scriptural families. The best kind of relationships are scriptural relationships. The best kind of, uh, of countries are scriptural countries. You see, there's no church that was, there's no country that was founded like America was founded. I believe there is a very thin wall, a remnant that is, uh, that is allowing God's grace to stay on this country with such wicked people in power in every way, shape, or form. Now, um, uh, by the way, by the way, if the church said it, uh, and the Bible didn't say it, I wouldn't believe it. If the sky were to split open and an angel were to come down and, 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 and tell me something and it didn't line up with the Bible, I was able to look up at Michael or Gabriel and say, chapter and verse, Mr. Angel, and he wasn't able to give me chapter and verse, I wouldn't believe him. I wouldn't believe him. Just because a, a, a Constantine had an image in the sky of a red cross or of a cross with a, a red shroud around it and he said, by this sign ye shall conquer, doesn't mean it was from God. It wasn't from God, not at all. We think God is the only one who can give visions. Nope. Joseph Smith of the Mormon church had, all, church had all kinds of them. The guy was so cuckoo, he'd put a rock inside of his top hat and put his face in his hat and, and, and have visions. You say, what? Yeah, really? Yep. The devil is a great illusionist. He's a liar, the father of lies. Now, I have so much here, and I'm not, I'm not in a hurry to preach all of it. But folks, if Three Rivers Baptist Church, it's going to make a real difference. Real difference. If you want to have a real difference in your family, in your home, you may be the smallest in your home and in your family, but you can say, I want, I want to know God. I want to know him. Then you can. I want to read this very quickly. Uh, maybe make another statement or two and close. Uh, oh, come on, Jackson. I know where it is. Jeremiah. Jeremiah 10.23. I love this. Here it is. Uh, nope, 923. 1023 is my verse. 923 says, Thus saith the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither the mighty man glory in his might, let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glory in this, that he, the glorying man, understandeth and knoweth me that I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. You say, God can't be known. That right there tells us that he can. Amen. It says not only can he, but he, hey, if you're gonna glory, glory in me that you, that you know and understand me. I just can't understand God's will. Yes, you can. I just can't understand God's, God's direction for my life. Yes, you can. I just can't understand how the Holy Spirit works. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. The Holy Spirit of God is part of the Trinity who is with us today. He's with us today. So the attributes that belong to God the Father and the attributes that belong to God the Son are all present with God the Holy Spirit. The attributes of God and of Jesus are the same attributes of the Holy Spirit who's with us today. Psalm 139 speaks of his omnipresence. Psalm 139 talks about the Spirit's omnipresence. Job 26, 23 talks about the Spirit's ability to create. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, we call him Lord. He's called out. He's called out. What do we say? I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of Paul. Is that what we say? 
No. If we say, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of Mary, is that what we say? No, we don't. Even though Paul was a good man, he was not deity. Even though Mary, of course, was, was um, uh, we honor her and we thank God for her. Let me say this. She was the mother of our Lord's body. She was not the, Lord, the mother of our Lord's deity. And that goes for our Catholic friends. If you were in Sunday school. Uh, uh, she, I'll say that again. She was the mother of our Lord's body. She was not the mother of our Lord's deity. She is not deity. We do not baptize in Mary's name. We do not save in Mary's name. We do not sanctify in Mary's name or Paul's name or Peter's name. It's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. His deity was from before the foundation of the world, the Bible says in John 1.1. 1, 1. To name any name and place where God belongs is absolute heresy. I have one, two and a half pages left. I will do these next week. But folks, Three Rivers Baptist Church and you as your families, as husbands and wives and kids and ministry workers and ministry leaders and church members and just people and born again people, you have to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit of God. He's a real person. I don't care what you have to do to make him real in your life to kind of get you to the point where like he's real, he's real. There was a point in, my, in, in time where I would buckle the passenger seat in my car when I was by my, you say, Brother Jake, that's corny. I was desperate to make him real in my life. Desperate, desperate. I want my kids to know what it's like to set out chairs in the aisle. I want to know what it's like to see six buses pulling up out here. Some of you are like, no, let's not do that again. Uh, uh, I, I want to know what it's like. I want, I want to have a, a hundred mothers in here on Mother's Day. I want to have a packed out building on Easter again. I want that, that two saved, that used to be 20 and 40 and 200. You say, what? Yeah. Where the spirit of the Lord is, folks, there is life, there is liberty, there is victory, there is power. There's people coming in saying, can I come in this Thursday and get baptized? Absolutely. What about... Look, Sunday between church, I'm going to be late. Can I get, yeah, yeah, come on in. Let's, yeah, let's go get baptized. Brother, Brother Jackson, I, I just had my friend saved at work, and we're gonna, both going to be off at 5 o'clock, and he wants to get baptized. I don't want to wait till Sunday. We might lose him. Can we come to the church and get baptized? Yes, you absolutely can. Let's do it. You see, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is power, there is life, there is liberty, there is, just because you walk around with a smile, and uh, that emotions go up and down. But the Spirit is consistent, and the Spirit of God penetrates the spirit of man. And if Three Rivers Baptist Church stands a chance, we'll only do it through the power of the Holy Spirit. Would you bow ahead and close your eyes, please? I can pick this up next week. Who is the Holy Spirit? Let's meet the Holy Spirit. Maybe, you know, I, I think I know everybody in this room pretty well, but I don't know your heart. I may know you, but I, I, don't, I may not know your testimony. Now, maybe you've never met the Holy Spirit yet. Maybe you've never met him, and I mean through salvation. Let me share with you very quickly. You're a sinner, and because you're a sinner, you have to die. You have to die and go to hell, but God doesn't want you to go to hell. God is not willing that anyone would die and go to hell, not willing that any would perish, but that all would come to repentance. You see, your teacher can't save you. Mom and dad can't save you. Your nation can't save you. There's no superhero coming to get you besides one, and he already came and he did what was needed for you to get born again and saved. His name was Jesus. And if you believe on Jesus, if you'll say, I know that I'm a sinner and I deserve to pay for my own sins in a place called hell, I don't want to go to hell. I call on Jesus to save me. I believe that he died for me. I believe that he arose, that he conquered death. I believe in Jesus. Then you can be saved right where you are, right how you are whether you're in this room right now or you're online somewhere listening to this later. But if you have been saved, you say, I know that I've been saved. I could tell you all about it when I got saved. If you say, I know I'm saved, would you raise your hand and show me? Would you say, I know I'm saved? I know I am. Okay, let me see. All right, every hand is up. You can put them down. All right, let me ask you this, saved person. You know somebody who isn't saved? Do you have a friend who doesn't know why Jesus died on a cross? 
why don't you share with them what the God, get some tracks today. Take some gospel tracks with you and share them with that loved one, with that friend. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to stand in just a moment. Miss Jennifer's going to begin to play. We're just going to do a few stanzas, but if you've neglected the Holy Spirit of God, if you've been giving him the cold shoulder, you've been ignoring him, you haven't given him any attention, why don't you come up here and get that right today? Would you stand with me while Miss Jennifer begins to play? Give way to the Holy Spirit and give in to him. Learn to obey those spiritual impulses. A holy people. Spirit wants to have that relationship with you. It's not grieve him. It's not upset him. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro about the whole earth seeking to show himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are perfect towards him. It's possible. He wouldn't tell us to do it if it couldn't be done. You can stay standing. Uh, come back tonight, and we're going to finish up on um, uh, determining what's valuable, what is valuable in life, who says it's valuable, uh, but uh, uh, determining what is valuable, and then next week be here for this. We're going to finish this up. Uh, by then, I'll probably have another nine pages. Uh, we'll just continue this thing out. I love it because, uh, man, the Holy Spirit, he's, the world's changing. He hasn't. People have been getting saved since, for, since God was ready for them to be saved. Uh, since uh, uh, Adam, since God put on a, a clothing for Adam and Eve, there's been redemption in the plan. There's no, nowhere it's written that people can't get saved in 2023. They still need to hear it. Let's be the church that does it. Uh, Brother Kevin, come and sing us out. That's good advice. Let's sing. We'll never say goodbye in glory. Say goodbye.